One of the cool parts of doing this whole OMV thing is the people we get to meet. One of them um, has been, I like to call him a good friend, despite the fact that we've never even met in person. Um, he hit me up uh, a couple months ago before Christmas and asked me if I wanted a particular issue of something that he knew I wanted. He had posted a picture of it. Me and Alex kind of freaked out on it. Um, and I offered him four dollars eight no <laughs> i told him i gave i offered him eight dollars so he could double his money or some shit like that it was some stupid thing but um he hit me up and asked me if i seriously wanted it um and i told him yes oh my god yes and uh he sold it to me which is really cool and it came across the country all the way from the other side um but uh i finally got uh, the invincible number one that i've been hunting down for a little while um this came from my man charlie who has been on two episodes now? Yep. Two. Um, if you haven't heard those episodes, Charlie runs the Facebook page Sketch Prices, facebook.com slash sketch prices. Um, and he's just an all-around real cool guy. Um, one of the coolest people we've met doing this thing. It's it's There's one thing we've gained out of the doing the show. It's that. Anyways, um, he knew I wanted this, and he had it. Um, and... Uh, he sold it to me, and it's pretty sweet. It's one of those Grail issues, I guess. It was my current Grail issue after I picked up um, what? What's so funny? He's on the toilet. Just he's pooping. <laughs> he's reading. He's reading. Um, is, is that, that Walking a, Dead? Is that Science Dog? I think it's, it's either Science Dog or what? Yeah, it's Science Dog. Um, because I don't think Walking Dead existed. Did it? I don't even know. But um, after I got the Walking Dead number eight, the first Tyrese, I was in my last video. Um, my, my new grail issue was invincible number one. Um, and I figured it's one of those things that I'm probably never going to get just because it's been getting more and more pricey as the years go on. But Charlie hit me up. He gave me a great price on it. Um, just cause he's an awesome guy like that. And, uh, the, the bulletproof <laughs> costume. I mean, I this is, I didn't realize that's what that was. Issue one right there. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Slayer, um, you know, obviously, it's a big deal. My last, uh, I got really tired of flipping the pages. My last video featured Invincible number two, um, which was, uh, at the time, like, one of the more rare issues that I owned. Um, but now I got the number one, which is awesome. Charlie, you are the you are the man. Um, honestly, I can't thank you enough for, for, uh, for doing this for me. It's really neat. Um, really, that's all I have. I don't collect very quickly when it comes to tough to find books um so this is the one that i have i wanted to display it um because i really want to give charlie a shout out charlie again thank you so much sketch prices facebook.com facebook.com slash sketch prices go check it out it is a amazing page um especially if you like comic sketches um and the guy who runs it is a really cool dude so that's all i have i'm gonna give the floor to alex who has substantially more than i do um, and I might chime in every now and then. Hey, were you just talking about Charlie? I was talking about Charlie. Charlie from Sketch Prices. So when he picked up that number one, he also got this number two. And since uh, since you were his first choice, like for uh, for offers, and I was I was like tertiary because <laughs> because you had said you already got number two, and so uh, so then I got like the 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 runner up prize. And he was offered me the number two, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll take it." I thought about it for a bit. Like, I didn't get back to him right away, but um, I, I'm probably not as big a fan as you are. I love Invincible; it's really cool, and I would like the number one, but I could settle for number two. <laughs> <laughs> someday you'll catch up. <laughs> I'll I'll get there, but uh, and because like when these things come out, yeah, look at that finger. That's straight up comic book finger, right? <laughs> like, look at the lines. Anyways. <laughs> it's when we see either like a Walking Dead issue or an Invincible issue, it's usually JR who can point out and go, oh, it's for Smurfs of so-and-so. <laughs> so with this one, it's, oh, it's for Smaller Twins. And I was like, I like the Mahler Twins. I'm in. So, yes, also thanks to Charlie. Uh, we're lucky because we're really good friends with them. Um, not like he makes this offer to anybody who looks at his page. But maybe if you have minor podcast a few times, you you could get that lucky too. It's one of the one of the benefits. 
So I went to the Agawam Flea Market um, this past Sunday. I've been there before, and it was kind of weird because uh, I went with Will, and I managed to find my own comics there, which I had brought a box or a couple boxes to the local auction to sell, and someone bought them and then brought them to the flea market to resell. And I was looking through them, and I was like, these are mine. This is funny. But anyway, um, so this most recent trip, uh, our friend Colin, who's been on the show, was recently asking about where to find good Deadshot issues or like what has good Deadshot content in them. And I was like, I think there's a miniseries somewhere. And there was one recently I know of. But uh, but I found like the full series of this one from from a while ago. 88, this is from. and uh, I was two. <laughs> And what I noticed was how, like, in the cover art on the bottom of the page, like, you could actively see Deadshot, like, like creeping into place and then and then making a shot, which is neat. But then what I did notice, but Jared pointed out, was that the number one is on issue one, the number two is on issue two, the number three, and so on. So, um, we can also we can also call these the the Will Smith issues. Yeah, because Will Smith is going to be Deadshot, and supposedly he's been cast as Deadshot in the Suicide Squad movie. There he is. Make oh, what do you see? So What's put in doing? your offers, gents. <laughs> maybe you can maybe you can pick these up. We'll start the bidding at two hundred dollars, three hundred, four hundred. We'll see. We'll see what <laughs> we'll see what uh, Mr. Colin has to say about that. Honestly, he gets first dibs. So those were neat. Um, speaking of Suicide Squad. I decided to pick up whatever else I, I could find around. And these aren't in too bad condition. Um, it's not like it's a popular book or a popular team or anything, but it's just a neat thing to collect. And it's there's times where I go to these places and I look for... St- Penguin was on the team? I don't remember him being... St- the, the roster changes all the time, which is a neat thing about Suicide Squad. As I was saying... Um, it says who watches The Watchmen. Yeah, they advertise like other books and that everything. Was- yeah. <laughs> um I pick things up that hopefully I can maybe resell down the line. Um, you know, just to make a few extra bucks here and there. Um so if I can get these for like a seven for, for five bucks or so, or maybe even a dollar a piece, that'd be really cool. And then maybe I could resell them when the, the movie comes out because someone might be interested in the history of it once you see the movie and there's a chance, you know. Um and when I post pictures of these on my on my personal Facebook page, I pointed out this guy as not Tom Hardy, because because he left production <laughs> of the movie. He was going to be Rick Flag, and that's that's who he was going to be. Guy in yellow shirt with gun. But now it might be Jake Gyllenhaal, right? Maybe. I can't wait to see to look back down the line when the movie actually comes out. Yeah, I'm gonna come back and watch this and see how wrong we are. <laughs> how many things changed? Yeah. Um, which I believe Brian Stagger was already on Arrow. Or, you know, not like they're going to have the same characters. But, yeah, I was like, oh, they're going to put Rick Flagg in the movie? He's just some guy who's not Nick Fury or not Sergeant Rock. He's he's an army dude with guns. Um, it's not like he's Enchantress or Captain Boomerang. Uh, but I picked these up at, you know, at a pretty cheap price. Um, same guy had this, which he had, like, neat, like, binders for him to put him in, in a three-ring, which just screams like a bad idea to me. Yeah. Yeah. But uh it's an older action comics. It's got a neat robot. I like robots. But also Green Arrow's back there. You can barely see him, but even tougher to see is the Atom. I had to read it. It's Junk Man apparently, the robot. And he is owning Superman. <laughs> He's just stomping him right in the crotch. <laughs> I don't have much to say about it. I thought it was a neat cover and I'll I wanna see what like Green Arrow was up to at the time, just because I'm a fan of him. Um not much more about that. Uh when you go to flea markets, one of the tough things to deal with is how mistreated everything is. Um, some issues are just thrown into into a, a, a plastic tote, and there's a bunch of issues in there, and they're all wrinkled or crumbled up, or they're torn up, and it's painful to look at. And this came out of one of those totes, and I was really just lucky that it came out in a decent condition. Nothing super special about this issue. I just like what-if stories, um, and this is what if the Punisher had joined S.H.I.E.L.D., and I was like, you know what? 
I do want to read about what if Punisher joined S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, that seems like an interesting story. It's one of those things that's like, it never happened, but we could check out maybe if it did. Um, so I do tend to collect uh, the what if tales when they come around. And the guy wanted like two bucks for it, and I did the thing where it's like, I don't want it then. I'm good. And I started walking away. <laughs> and he's like, well, what do you want for it? I'm like, a buck. Which honestly, I... I shouldn't pay more than 50 cents for this, but I'm a fan. Um, so that was neat. You're a generous person. <laughs> I, I do what I can. Uh, speaking of The Punisher, there's a comic that I've heard of but never seen, but like I've seen like pictures of it and didn't think it was actually a real thing because I thought it was just a parody or a joke. And that's The Punisher meets Archie. And you hear about it enough, and it's like, they can't be real. It's, there's, there's no way they would combine those two characters. There it is. I found it, and I was like, I, I kind of have to have it just for, just for that reason. It's got the cutout cover, which I also like when they try new things, or at least like different things with how they do covers and how they do even interiors, as I've shown you before in one of the past. Uh, it's a really good shape, yeah. despite having all these like tags you know, that <laughs> yeah. could easily rip off or puncture. If you were to shove it into the bag... That like I have um one of the Lobo the Lobo trades it has a cutout cover like that. And it's like it's an image of Lobo's butt or something like that, or Lobo's back's back is back. Um and part of that is torn because it got shoved into its its thing and it got messed up. Um But yeah, Punisher Meets Archie is a real thing. Which I I've never read an Archie comic ever, but excuse me, I'll give this one a look. <laughs> there he is. He like goes to the high school prom and stops bad guys. That's a perfect image. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like these this art should never be combined for any reason. But it's it looks hilarious. And you do want to see these characters interact. It's not bad. But it's just one of those things. I also collect books that are just way out there that might make no sense. And uh and this seems like one of them. Show the back cover. <laughs> <laughs> That's my that's my favorite part right there. <laughs> I might put it back in the bag just with this part with it facing that way. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, that's an older book too. I think that was ninety six, ninety four. I think you said because I think we commented that it was twenty years old. Ninety four, correct. Which uh, signed by. I thought that was Rick. Tom DeFalco, yeah. Who was big way back then. Anyway. Um, I saw this, and I thought I've seen it before, because I have. But I haven't. Tricky, I know. Um, I really like the Flash Rogues. Uh, I'm, I'm getting sketches of the whole group. Um, I'm still missing a few, but I want more. And it's their secret origins. So it's not like... I thought it might be like more of the, the encyclopedia entries, but it's just like, you know, different stories... Either they made new ones or they've collected them from past issues. And they put it together like showing different rogues' origins. And it's pretty neat. <laughs> Thanks for the help. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm like I'm like mutilating these pages. Um, but like if you want to see where certain characters come from or see how they interacted before that. Like here here comes the Pied Piper. And it's like he's just you some... Booster Gold. <laughs> it's... No one cares about Booster Gold. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Booster Gold's cool. Uh, and like you see the trickster and, and it's pretty neat. Um, but what was more neat to me is that I, more neat, I went back to my flash box and I found, uh, the inspiration for the cover. So this was the original issue, which came out. I mean, it's back when it was actually still 12 cents. And so some stuff they didn't change. So like Captain Boomerang's still there. Captain Cold's the same. Heat Wave is the same. Flash is still passed out. That one's a bit darker. But, like, they switched Mirror Master with Weather Wizard. And, like, they replaced the uh, the Trickster with Top. And Pipe Piper's still sneaking in there. Um, but it's another thing. Like, I really like this cover when I got it. And the fact that I saw it again, but, like, reworked. And, like, the quality wasn't quite there, to be honest. Um <laughs> <laughs> shots fired i saw it and i was like it's not as good as when i remember they just redo it and they just they redrew it essentially um but it's neat i i'll read it for the rogues and it's also like neat to see like when they reuse ideas 
Um, because that was the intent is still showing the rogues dominating over the Flash. So that was pretty cool. And I, I'm really just lucky that I have both these issues. I also got uh, Ultimate X-Men number one, which was my um, my introduction to the Ultimate Universe because I didn't get it at first because the Ultimate Marvel is different from regular Marvel. And it's like, why does Wolverine look a little different and have shorter hair and have like wrist gauntlets on? Um, so this one I got for like half price. I don't know what it's actually really worth now, but it's one that I want to have because I have a lot of Ultimate stuff. So why not? And along that line is, uh, I picked up a few issues of The Crisis on Infinite Earths, because this is one of the, the it's it's a, what do, you, what do I call it? The series itself was pretty groundbreaking for its time. The way it combined all the different sections of the DC universe, um, and then like put all the characters together, because they were from... Well, here, it's the two Earths. It's different Earths that are combining into one. And so it was a major storyline in, in D.C. So what I Up do... until the new 52. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> uh, so what I try to do with certain maxi series like this, where there's 12 issues or so, is I'll try and just pick up whatever I can of them here and there. And then eventually, because I, if I get enough, I'll be able to combine my own um, full set. Because individually, the books aren't worth that much. But when you get the full set together, then maybe I could sell a full set for a decent profit. So that's what I was going for here, just adding them up. That's number five, and this one's number four. And one of the things I kind of liked, um, Lobo appearing in a, in a Mr. Miracle comic book. Excuse me. Lunch. Um... I was like, I'm a fan of Lobo too, and I have a bunch of stuff of his, and he doesn't appear until like way later on in the book. Um, so this is one that again I got like it for a dollar. Uh, I can't grab it. <laughs> We're terrible at reading comics. Look at Willow. I had this game. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to go see it in theaters. Um, but like it's stuff with new guys and stuff with Mister Miracle. And then eventually, way in back, we'll discover Lobo. And I noticed something about about one of his early his early images here. So there he is. Um, what's funny, I went to my box of Lobo to show some reference. This was his first appearance right there that's that's his first appearance of lobo the, he looks ridiculous he's riding a weird bike he's got a orange and purple costume and it's all it's spandex and skin tight he the hair is kind of weird he he looks weird um he later on like evolved into this character he's still lobo even though like this is lobo that we've come to known recently you know like this is the one like we expect when we hear Lobo, we think of him wearing like the weird leather and, and the big chain and the hook on the end to see this guy, like with the hair, like tied back in a ponytail and stuff. And, and like, he looks kind of, kind of handsome and pretty almost. And like, he's, he's not like yelling and smashing shit everywhere. It's kind of weird. And you don't really get it. And like, even what his, his, uh, his black lines used to be. Well, Everyone had a huge problem when this Lobo came around because they're saying that's not the real Lobo, that this is the real Lobo. And everyone was flipping out when the new 52 one came out and they're like, he ruined Lobo. That's not what he looks like. He looks like he's from Twilight. That's <laughs> yeah. what everyone said. Look, he's so handsome and he's got these weird little, these little face things. That doesn't make sense. It's like that's Lobo over there. But then I look back at this and I'm like that. You know, they're not too far apart. It's just history coming around. Like, how many fans will will recognize that and see it? See, there he is in one of the, the recent issues. This is number one, which I think they're up to four now. But then, then you've got him from way back in Mr. Miracle. So, 
they're they're not really like redesigning, making a new, more effeminate Lobo. They're he's not really effeminate. He just doesn't look like the gruff guy that we're he's used leaner. to. He's leaner. Yeah, he's more lean. He's a bit sleeker. Streamlined. His, he's stream. His, his tattoos are different, or whatever those markings are. To be compared, you know, it's. Let's see. It doesn't. Ninety from nineteen ninety. So they're only going back. 24, 25 years. 